Yeah, so Ajahn Ganha, over and over, this last time we visited him, talked about setting the past to zero, <laughs> not going back into the past. I also, when I reread Stillness Flowing uh, during the Vasa, one of the things that uh, struck me was that Ajahn Chah would never let the monks, um, when they're bringing up uh, difficulties with one another, never let them go back into the past. Um, that's a good, a good thing to remember in our interactions with each other. You know, like not bringing up past hurts. You know, trying to work out something that's happening now. One of one of one thing we can find quite hurtful is sometimes people might say, "Yeah, it's you. That's you. You act like that, and you did this to me before, and you know, or you know, you're always like this." That kind of thing. If we can let go of the past, we can solve the problem in the present with wisdom and kindness much more easily. And then, of course, this this teaching of Ajahn Ganao this you know set the past to zero. It's hard to do because you know the mind wants to go go over that um, thing that happened in the past. You know, I, sometimes I think it's like, you know, do you ever have a sore in your mouth and your tongue just comes to kids when you're rubbing over it? It's, it's kind of like that. And, um, and it's it's true, like one of the quotes that came up um, as an instruction from the Buddha was, you know, this idea that there is just this sense and put in no matter how many times it comes up, I'm not going to let it obsess the mind. And it's the what what's interesting about it is every time we think that thought or we go through this series of this happened and that happened and that happened and we're building a case for how hard it is right now. And and that's because it feel it may feel really hard. There may be a lot of things we've had to handle and that's understandable. But then if we can take care of our feelings in the prison, be present with them without in, you know, indulging in them, without um, owning them, without identifying with them, then they're, they're, we'll work through them. But if we build up this idea, you know, this happened and that happened and that happened. Um, we're adding to it and we're, we're creating a tunnel for that thought to come back and that feeling of being oppressed or having a lot of trouble. So it's funny, it's a, it's a funny balance. We don't want to deny our feelings. If we try to shove them under the rug, that doesn't work. They start coming out in funny ways. But if we, if we, think in ways that add to them that keeps the the fire the suffering going and it doesn't help i have a question so yeah. are you talking about setting the past to zero in reference to negative experience right right but yeah not positive because i remember you teaching like think about the good things that have happened or the good things you've mm -hmm. done like that's all in the past Mm -hmm. So you're not sitting that you're right. time. Because. We need some wisdom in this time yeah. because sometimes we can really encourage ourselves by remembering the good things we've done in the past. And and also uh, this is something that people use when they're dying. Mm -hmm. you, know, like, or you can help your friend or family member if you're there when they're dying to remind them of all the good that they've done in the past to, to, bring, to elevate them. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's not just across the board, is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. But then when Ajahn Gunha says an Arahant doesn't have, doesn't have the past, they don't carry that context with them. Then you, you start to recognize, oh yeah, if you're not clinging to anything, you really don't have a story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what is it that elevates the mind? It's the Dhamma. It's mm -hmm. the understanding of the way things actually are. So I think I think it does require wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, as, as we practice and develop ourselves. 
And all those kinds, those kinds of nagging thoughts from the past. You don't want to give them any um, additional energy. Mm -hmm. You want to perpetuate them. And we have to have the patience to go, okay, yeah, there you are again. I know you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Seen you before. <laughs> yeah. And when I can ask one more question. So when you were reading some of the things for people, there was something that I I can't remember now, but I would like to remember about like what is the medicine for the mind? There was like virtue and there was Okay, so just to go it's such a beautiful <laughs> teaching, I think. So yeah. The four requisites for the body, of course, food, clothing, shelter, and medicine. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at this is this is what supports the body, the body needs. And then if you look at well, what does the mind need? Look, you can compare the food for the mind being charity. Like what we do with us. You know, selfless and good for others, kindness, taking care of others, and then that that that, that good feeling, that that um, uplift to the mind. That's food for the mind. Mm -hmm. And of course, it it doesn't work if we are trying to get something out of it right, for ourselves. Um, um, but if but when we when we're really helping because um, we want to give, mm -hmm. and you know, Ajahn Gana talks a lot about being a giver. Mm -hmm. The path is based in generosity. It's predicated on generosity. And when I it was this um, summer at, at um, during the Vasa at. Bodhinyana, where Ajahn Brahmali was teaching sutta class once a week, and he talked about the, the words that the Buddha used when he talked about generosity. He uses those same words when he talks about liberation, about enlightenment. Mm. And it's because it's it's letting go. It's mm -hmm. letting go of things. Giving, giving, giving up, letting go. And so it's it's really amazing how important that being a giver is, you know, mm. that generosity does. It brings that nourishment to the mind, mm. that that's the food for the mind. And it also prepares the mind to learn how to let go of everything. Mm. Mm -hmm. To really let go of, I mean, this is like letting go of the past. This is another training, right? It's like, we're gonna let go of everything. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we die, we have an experience of letting go of almost everything. <laughs> um, but our karma comes with us. Our um, mental patterns. And so we want to make sure those mental patterns are something we want to take along. <laughs> we really practice so much. So that's the generosity or charity is the thank you, is the food. And then the the clothing, the protection of the body is clothing, protection for the mind is virtue. So we really the lovely idea, you know, we took these five precepts and or whatever, five, eight. 311. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a protection. Mm. Protection for the mind, um, even protection for a life. You know, if we um, stay away from doing immoral things, we mm. save ourselves so much trouble. You know? We're more likely to be able to preserve our health longer. And, the stability of our life, relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a tremendous protection for the mind. And the mind, again, is virtue is a basis. A lot, you know, you've got generosity to feed the mind, but then there's also virtue as a basis for when the people, 
meditation. Mm -hmm. You can't really do it very well without virtue. And even like <clears throat> the, the difference between practicing you know, states of concentration with or without virtue is the difference between you know something that maybe can develop psychic powers versus something that really leads to enlightenment. Mm -hmm. You can't get to get to enlightenment without the virtue. It doesn't work. So mm -hmm. that's like that's like the, the like clothes for the body is the protection for the mind. And then the, the dwelling, the house, the home protecting us, giving us shelter, and that's samadhi. Being able to really let the mind go into stillness. And that's, that's our home. The true home of the mind is to uh, have that, that peace. And they interact together, right? So they support each other. Yeah. They certainly support yeah. each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess you can run around your house naked, but you better not <laughs> go into samadhi without the virtue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, didn't need to bring that image up, did I? <laughs> and then <laughs> and then the medicine. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so, <laughs> the medicine is the wisdom. The wisdom. And or another way to is the dumb. Mm -hmm. So but wisdom, Tanya, mm -hmm. understanding the way things are, what's really true. Mm -hmm. And so Sila, Samadhi, and Panya. But Donna is there's no Donna, Sila, 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 Kind of surprised my mind is um, the um, simile of um, um, virtue um, as a clothes for the mind, and I've been thinking of that quite a lot these days. Because when we talk about when you talk about virtue, when talk, people talk about virtue, I thought you know that is like you said, it's a basic, and I thought that might be the food should it be the food and but also you know it makes sense and the giving and the loving kindness it's it's you know kind of sustain our practice uh, for having that and then um because of the new year and then everybody here we're buying the things you know we buy the clothes a lot mm. and to make us beautiful and I thought well that's true you know the inner beauty, you know, it's really sh should it through the virtue. And I look through the YouTube and um, and before when I'm looking at the celebrities, my fa my favorite, you know, pop star when I was little, and they're getting old. And but you look at also like um, a venerable monk, a venerable nun, and when they're old, they're still so beautiful. And then so I I saw like yes, that's true. The virtue really is a close. It's a make us so beautiful. So you know beauty. So that's um one of the inspiration I got this week um from this uh, teaching and uh, and so yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, and, and that that teaching from Ajahn Chart, you know, like um Divya found it, put it on the WhatsApp, you know, like shared it with some, some people. And, and it's like, we really as a community can can inspire each other, you know, open, open things up. You know, if you ever get bored or feel down, you know, reach out to some of your Kalyana meetings. They you know, have the ability to kind of inspire each other. Also have empathy.
It's a collective um, a strong word today. The Dhamma is contagious. The Dhamma is contagious. <laughs> um, unvirtuous behavior is also contagious. We have to um, put ourselves in the right context, in the right company. Um, feel free to ask more questions, but I also wanted to talk a little bit about this concept of aditana or um, um, setting an intention. Aditana is um, one of the ten paramis in Theravada Buddhism, one of the perfections. I don't know if I'm so keen on that word perfections, but it's one of the great um, qualities that we can develop. And it's interesting because when I first encountered it when I was visiting Wat Pananachat in the early days uh, when my son was a monk there. And, and uh, the monks would talk about making aditanas, aditanas for like the vasa for three months, you know, not lie down to sleep, just use three postures. Or, you know, have some practice of how many times you circumambulate the stupa or something, you know, some, whatever. One thing that they talked about was having some wisdom around what you choose as your as a practice practice that you're using for some reason. <clears throat> and the most effective body times in my experience have been around resisting habitual behavior that I know is not good for me or others. So trying to set an body time, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna say this kind of thing. And then it's very important to um, set a period of time. So sometimes people will make a determination, but they don't set a time limit on it. It's like, and then it starts to remind me of a New Year's resolution, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. which we don't tend to be very good at keeping, I've like, experienced. Mm -hmm. And so this is very different. This is like a really committed practice, observance, that you set a period of time. You set a doable period of time. Yes, I can actually do this for two weeks. Mm. I can do it for two days. Or I can do it for two hours. It depends on what it is. What are, could you give some examples of the kinds of things that people might? I'm not going to give unsolicited advice <laughs> for two days. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> It's kind of like a paradox there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Unsolicited advice. That was one that I encountered many years ago and I found it really, really interesting. It's like, I mean, I got to wait until they ask me what I think. <laughs> and I have to do this with my children. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was the first wave of Addy I'm gonna, I'm gonna not give, I'm, I'm not gonna give unsolicited advice to anyone except my children. <laughs> you can have exceptions. I figured it's my job, right? Yeah, right. It's my job to give them unsolicited <laughs> advice. <laughs> and my daughter's like, why me? <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought about that. Well, oh, I guess they don't like that. <laughs> Were, were they funny. over 18 at the time? Yeah, they oh. were over 18 at the time. <laughs> and so I had to learn how to not give unsolicited advice. And how did you learn that? Well, you, you use mindfulness. Oh. Mm -hmm. You really, um, you know, see your patterns. Right. And you really, you have to really want to. Um, so the Buddha said, you know, sometimes when he saw that something would be better, like, he was talking about meditation and he like, okay, it would be better if I didn't have thoughts. But then he said, why doesn't my mind launch out into that and really make that happen? And, and then he said, it's because I haven't seen the danger of having thoughts. 
Mm -hmm. So we also have to understand why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. To see and giving unsolicited advice, the arrogance, the, mm -hmm. you know, I know better. Well, I have this information that's going to help you and, you know, whatever. It's like you got to see to see the danger, to see the benefit of, you know, like, wait until you're invited. It's a bit like the cook, right? Observing what, yeah, what there's people that. eat or what they take from you. Right? Yeah, what there's you some eat. of that. It's And and so this is for anything mm -hmm. that we want to change mm -hmm. and to see the reason why we should change it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be something as simple as I'm not going to eat sugar this mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, and just seeing how that works for the body. But that's where the cook comes in. You know, you're mm -hmm. observing um, the the results. So instead of, you know, making a resolution like, okay, I'm going to work out five times a week mm -hmm. at the gym, which maybe is a good thing. So maybe you want to make that that resolution or that added time. I'm going to get more physical exercise. Then, you know, just try it for a week. Mm -hmm. Or you could say, I'm going to do it for three weeks. That's enough time, they say, to build a habit. Right. So I'm absolutely not going to fail to do it for this period of time. Mm -hmm. So you want to make it doable, but we also want to stretch ourselves a little mm -hmm. bit. And we want to make sure it's something wholesome. Like, I've never really felt like sitters practice this idea of not lying down Mm. Uh, to be that wholesome an idea, but I don't know. I can't speak for everybody. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. <clears throat> one monk, when Ajahn Chah got sick, there was a monk, one of the monks with his disciples who decided that they were going to uh, do sitter's practice until Ajahn Chah got better. Mm -hmm. like, oh, no. <laughs> or died. It was and yeah. And he, he stayed alive for another 10 years. Mm -hmm. And he kept it up, mm -hmm. this monk. And it really, he said it really messed up his meditation. Because mm -hmm. you just, when you sit down, you just want to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, and it messed up his back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like you really have to use wisdom with this kind of thing. And, and you know, like knowing how to... Um, you know, stretch yourself mm -hmm. and be wise about what you take on. And mm -hmm. I feel like, okay, you know, you can decide you're going to do something for two weeks and then you can always decide to do it for another two weeks. So mm -hmm. yeah. know yourself by that time that this is really good for me. I'm going to keep it up mm -hmm. or something like that. And is that the criteria that you discover that it's good for you? Yeah, you yeah. do mm -hmm. observe yeah. how it is for you, for your practice. And and maybe it's something special that you do for a short period of time. Like this is a very common thing in, in the Ajahn Chah tradition, at least to take something up for the three months of the Vasa. Mm. What's well, a little like Lent? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. They call it Buddhist Lent. Buddhist Lent. They even call it Buddhist Lent. <laughs> so, you know, like, mm. and then you, you you always, we always want to look at the results of our practice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what is it leading to? Um, and a lot of times we try things that we don't see. We don't know what it's going to lead to. Mm -hmm. But we see that other people, the teacher or other people mm -hmm. that we respect are doing this or have done it. And then we try it too, maybe. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, so the, the key things are that we're clear about what it is that we're signing up for, and we know um, how long we're going to do it. And do we tell someone else about it, or we just... It's very it? good to tell someone else. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to tell one of these mighty redwoods. <laughs> um, right, but making that... I had an Aditan with a big old Douglas fir once. <laughs> 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 and I'd go out and check in, and the Douglas fir was very patient with me, <laughs> but I kept it. I kept it. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's almost like saying it out loud um, mm. really helps. And then what happens if you if you 
fall down? You know, what mm -hmm. happens if you don't keep it? Well, then it's very important to reaffirm it until the time period ends. So you mm -hmm. reaffirm it. And this came from Ajahn Suchito. He says, reaffirm the aditan with a physical gesture, like stand up mm -hmm. or something physical. It, it, it imprints more in the body. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like, you know, I think, I think a lot of times my new year's resolutions of the past fell by the way after about three days, because it was half hearted, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so what you want to do is do something that matters. It's kind of interesting, like the relationship to neuroscience, right? Like making the gesture and, uh -huh. and bringing it forward and keeping it and sensing how you feel. It's I like this concept. <laughs> Aditan, it is. Aditan, Aditan or Aditana. Yeah. It would seem that like having some, um, I lost the word, some um, conviction or having restraint of some way might in and of itself be a good thing to do for yourself, you know, like habits, bringing, yes. the, uh, um, like reining yourself in, mm -hmm. in a way that is disciplined. Establishing discipline. discipline. Yeah. yeah. Establishing discipline. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Knowing you can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I can get up at four in the morning, every morning for three weeks and practice. Mm -hmm. Or I can, you know, yeah. do an all night sit once a week there are other people like Ajahn Brahm said he never found any benefit in fighting tiredness fighting mm -hmm. sleepiness in meditation so you just have this underlying um, subtle aversion mm -hmm. and <clears throat> other people they'll you know like struggle their way through tiredness and then come out come through that with this burst of energy and they really get a benefit of it. so you also have to we're learning about our own mind and body mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have to learn about what is encouraging inspiring what keeps us going you know i mean the those four requisites of the mind that's the kind of food clothing shelter and medicine that we all need mm -hmm. but then we can learn from ourselves learn from ourselves and for ourselves what works for us and always with that idea in mind that we're going to wake up mm -hmm. we're doing this for a really good reason mm -hmm. um, liberating the mind from suffering and we see the benefits as we go mm -hmm. and you know find incredible undescribable and joy and happiness as a result. I have so many questions. I have one more question if I can take the time. Sorry, everybody. Sure. So my question is, so I did this meditation with Ajahn Brahm. I think it was a talk he gave December 31st, but there was this incredibly long, deep relaxation. Right? <laughs> it was beautiful. <clears throat> but what I discovered when I did that is that as I got in this amazing samadhi state, then I started to worry. Oh, maybe I'm missing something, you know, or maybe I should be doing something. And, and then mm -hmm. I don't really know. I didn't know what to do, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I kept dropping that and letting that go. But I was surprised that when I reached the deep state, mm -hmm. that my mind was more weird and restless about things. Yeah, that's habit. Mm -hmm. Just so little, you yeah. just keep calming that down and mm -hmm. you know, letting it go. But yeah, the what pops into the mind comes from past conditioning. Mm -hmm. It's habit. Mm -hmm. Your mind is used to much more stimulation than that. So mm -hmm. like, yeah, what should I be doing now? <laughs> right. What's happening? What's happening? Mm -hmm. Am I missing something? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is somebody going to say something online? Hi, Carol. 
who she is. Yes, Paula? I'll say something if no one else has anything. Um, I think I'd like to work on an aditana for right speech. Mm -hmm. um, it's so, so challenging. And there's so many areas that I could maybe um, zero it down to, like um, maybe just saying that I will never interrupt. I'll wait until someone's completely done before I talk. Mm -hmm. Or I really liked my uh, uh, teaching. You know, I'll know the state with conflict and I'll know the state without conflict. So I could mm -hmm. say if, if you know, there's times when someone will say something to you and you, you, you can't, you, you, before you, you realize it, you, you, you've said something back to them and, yeah. and it wasn't a skillful thing. Mm -hmm. it, and, and because um, it just seems like if you are, if someone says something to you that really uh, you don't feel is right, you, you have this reaction. Mm -hmm. And I would love to um, get your ideas about uh, how to set an Aditana for right speech, maybe there's many, many. <laughs> yeah, I would pick one pattern, like you said. I would pick, first. I would start. I would pick one pattern that you notice in yourself that you want to change. And maybe it's that you know when someone says something, I want to try to pause mm -hmm. before I respond. Yeah, it's hard. To change yeah, but I, yeah. yeah, I think that, like, if there's anything I need to work on, that, that's it. Um, um. Yeah, so so the, the thing that will happen, you set, you set the edit on, I want to pause. Maybe you want to count to three before you say mm. anything. And that'll give you at least that'll that'll slip that the thin edge of a wedge in there, because mm -hmm. that's what you need. You need that thin ed edge of the wedge in there. Yeah. Which bring, you know, you got to have mindfulness first of all already to catch yourself. Mm -hmm. And what will happen is you won't catch yourself. Um, you know, usually with the patterns we have. We want to change it, but then the first however many times um, we miss it and then we catch it just afterwards, but then you stop. As soon as you catch yourself, you stop. And then you can, you know, think about how you want to handle that because it's harder when it, somebody else is involved, right? Because you've already they created something, <laughs> but maybe you can practice, maybe your family members, if you can tell them what you're doing and you can ask for a rewind. Mm -hmm. Can we rewind? rewind. Okay. And then, you know, most of the time when you, when you, my experience is, of course, I've been very fortunate with the people I live with, but most of the time, when you talk about this kind of thing with someone that you're close to, they're very happy to give you the rewind option. And then, you know, like, okay, I want to go back to when you said that. And, and then you just, then you pause and you give yourself time. It's redoing the, the same thing, but you're training your mind. And then you see how, how it goes because, you know, it, it's like that determination to change this pattern. And, you know, you can't just say, oh, I'm not going to do it. And then if you do it, you failed. Mm -hmm. That's not the way to approach it. The way to approach it is, okay, I'm going to catch it as soon as I can. And then I'm going to do what I can to recover from that and take the mind back to where the event occurred and then play it out in the way you want to play it out. Do you think um, there's any mindfulness meditation you can do to help you? Like maybe, or is it just straight up meditation just 
that's really I think I think you could probably create something for yourself like in the morning uh, or whenever you're going to sit down to meditate maybe take a couple of minutes at the end and reestablish your aditana great and prepare yourself to walk into the room where you're going to encounter another person mm -hmm. so if you have this in mind and you can do that as many times as you need to during the day right you're by yourself and then you know you're going to be in contact with other people and then you know you remind yourself of your aritana and then see what happens yeah i think that's that sounds yeah i just have been feeling like there's so many things to practice so many things to understand and i i've been feeling like i just need I just need one thing to have some um, skill with to give me a feeling like I'm I'm having some accomplishment. And um, I, I I keep coming back to right speech. It's mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, huge. And and I feel like if I can get myself to cool myself mm -hmm. in those three seconds, mm -hmm. that would probably be huge in my life. Just yeah. huge. And so this is very much in line with the with the uh, advice from the Buddha that you got, because mm -hmm. usually those quick answers are because there is some kind of conflict there. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So this is great because it gives you a practical approach, and mm -hmm. and then you you see how that goes. You know, is this um, is this container strong enough? I mean, that's, that's the thing. When something's not working in your practice and you look at, is the container strong enough or do I have to add something? Do I need to add something to the container to strengthen the context? Mean about container, I know. Um, okay, so one way to think of the precepts or the, the monastic form is that it's a container. It's, oh. it's got boundaries. It's providing support. It's providing protection. So there might be something else you can add um, that strengthens that container. I saw a flash of um, an offer in the chat if you wanted to have a buddy. Right. I saw that too. I'll get back to Olivia. I used really yeah. well. And so it's like there's another way to strengthen the container. Uh-huh. You have another person you talk to about this, that you report back to to your nuns or whatever, you know, like you can make the container stronger, mm. the context. You know, you want to you want to uh, stack the deck in your favor. <laughs> so this actually works, you know, and, and you can do that. Um, with various kinds of supports. That's great. Thank you for that. Yeah, and then, and then you know, it's it's like I think Lynn was mentioning before, is like these things are not only valuable in themselves, but they also train the mind. It, it really sharpens our mindfulness because now mm -hmm. our mindfulness has got to really be on top of what my speech is. You know, it's, and more than that, it's got to be on top of what I'm feeling, which is where the speech comes from. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's really good. It's really good training. <laughs> Thanks for your support. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Lynn says to Paula too, but quietly. <laughs> 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 so good. Okay. In the last um, couple minutes, we're going to chant Gianto, the victory chant. So this is this is um really the the blessings, <laughs> and I know we've got people who know this chant. If we all do it, uh, if we do it from online, it'll sound awful. But if we just all do do it here, <laughs> so yeah.
every blessing for all of you for this year, this coming opportunity to practice and develop the mind. Jayanto Bodhi Amole Akyananandi Wadeno Ewang Tawang Vijaya Ho Hijaya Sukaya Mangale Aparajita Palan Kesi Se Pata Vipokare Abise Kesaba Buddhana Agapato Pamodati Sunakatang Sumangalang Supapatang Suhutitang Sukano Sumahuto Chasuitang Brahmachari Supadakinang Hayakamang Wachakamang Padakina Padakina mano kama anidite padakina padakina nikatwana labantate padakine. May you have every good blessing. May all the devas protect you by the power of all the Buddhas. May you ever be well. May you have every good blessing. May all the devas protect you by the power of all the Dhamma. May you ever be well. May you have every good blessing. May all the devas protect you by the power of all the Sangha. May you ever be well. All right, friends. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks, everybody.